Hi guys, Sowers here, and um, I'm going to talk about Black Ops 2 in this commentary. And uh, so I've put a bit of Black Ops 2 gameplay in the background, and it's going to be some gameplay from the Gamescom, which was last week, of Cargo Domination and CTF. Um, and yeah, obviously my teammates went to that, and um, obviously I was getting a lot of questions actually um, why I weren't there. But basically, they only needed three players because of the um, free versus free thing they were doing, um, multi-team deathmatch. So they only wanted three players from our team. Uh, so them three got to go. Um, I wasn't really too fussed at the time, you know. I'm not really too bothered, but um, from watching it and you know seeing and hearing from what it was like, I wish I kind of went now, um, even if it was just to spectate, you know, just to be there. But um, yeah, that's how it is, and um, yeah, it looked like a really good event. And obviously, we got to find out a lot of information about Black Ops 2, and it's actually amazing how much work Treyarch and David Von Der and everybody at Treyarch has put into the uh, kind of esports side of the game. Um, I never thought something like this would be so um, well put together. I mean, there's so many features based around esports. It's just crazy thinking about it. But um, yeah, my first impressions really, um, are really good. I've heard a lot of feedback, obviously, from my team and other people that were there. Um, and I'd say overall, it's gonna be, it's gonna absolutely change everything for Call of Duty. Not just because of all the features, but um, it looks like they've tried to really make the game box ready. And there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, different things like score streaks and should we not ban them or whatever, but I'll talk about that in a bit. But um, the maps look really, well, I don't know what, I can't really say really good because I haven't played it, but they look quite symmetrical, they look quite well balanced, and obviously Hastra being involved with the, um, well, Treyarch development uh, staff, I don't know what he's been doing, I think he's like just been an advisor or something. So I think he must have had quite a bit of input on the maps and things like that. Um, but yeah, it looks really good so far. Um, the guns look, it looked like there's quite a variety of guns being used, but with the game being new, that's probably the, why that was the case. I mean, over time, people will kind of figure out which are the best guns, but if the guns really are that well balanced, and that's obviously another bonus, it's good to see more guns being used uh, rather than just being one dominant gun or whatever. Um, but yeah, um, there was a few attachments which I thought were a bit weird, like the laser sight um, on the gun. Um, which made the hip fire accuracy really good. That kind of, um, kind of, well, you could see a lot of the SMG players weren't even aiming in. Basically, people were just hip firing across the map, so that looked way overpowered. So I don't know if they're going to tune that and realise how overpowered that was, or what. But um, yeah, also the wild card and custom classes is going to change things a lot as well because now you can, you really can just customise your class to how you want it. So you can have six perks if you want out of your ten slots you could have six different types of attachments well I don't know about attachments but basically you don't need to have three perks like you do usually in Call of Duty um, you can have a much bigger range of uh, classes I heard there's millions of different types of classes you can have overall supposedly but yeah it seems like it's really customizable and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing I don't know I guess it's a good thing in terms of variation for the game but it could end up being with some classes being stupidly overpowered um, you can imagine like some SMGs just running about with lightweight and different perks that will allow them to sneak through to flags and things like that, but I guess we'll be able to look at that when the game comes out. But overall, we're just really hoping that the game is well balanced and that they listen to the feedback off the top players that were there, um, because the more box ready the game is, the better it's going to be. Um, and as much as people bang on about how um, you know it's important that we don't ban a lot of things, I think one of the key things is just educating people about esports, and that's what I think. I think the Gamescom stream has helped us a lot because even I was getting a lot of messages off people, like because obviously my team was there, and I think my teammates got loads of messages when they got back. But it's good to see that a lot of people now are kind of aware of what esports is, and you know it seems like a lot of people want to make teams for it. But I'll talk a bit about that in uh, later on in this commentary. But um, yeah, just going to talk a bit about through the few uh, the features, sorry. Um, and COD casting was one of the main ones that they showed off because that was probably the most impressive thing I think I saw. Um, because you know the, the the amount of features that they put in for that is going to help in so many ways. It's going to make it a much better watch for us as players. I mean, it's been criticised in the past by other scenes, especially like PC scenes. Um, uh, a lot of people that were quite well-known people saying that Call of Duty is not that good to watch compared to games like Counter Strike or StarCraft. Um, but I think this COD casting is going to help with that a lot. It's going to allow the casters to find the action, especially with that mini map that you get, um, where they can see the whole team strategy, where everybody is, and who's going to end up running into free players or whatever. So they're going to be able to find the action a lot better. Um, but it's also going to be a lot easier for the viewers to like kind of see what's going on in the game. 
especially with the nameplates and the scoreboard at the top, um, and even the listenings that they can do now as well, which are a lot easier for casters to do. So there's a lot of different features that are going to not only make it a better watch, but allow you know newer uh, members to the community to understand the game a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's really going to encourage a lot of casters as well, I think, especially with the streaming feature in the game where anybody can stream now. Uh, anybody can stream a game. So I think it's going to encourage a lot of people to kind of use that feature. Um, even public players might look into doing it. So it's really increasing the awareness of esports, I think. So overall, that quad casting feature, I think it's. I'd be very shocked if it's not an MOG now, I really would. Um, because that feature in itself. Um, it's just going to make the game so much better to watch um, and a lot easier to produce as well for, pe uh, for the people that are running LAN events so I'm pretty sure they'll be chuffed to that uh, especially EGL events like that and um, they'll really like the idea of this podcasting I'm guessing but yeah there's so many cool features I could talk about but um, I'm guessing a lot of you know about all of those features anyway so I just wanted to summarise a bit what I thought of that um, I think it's quite an important feature and yeah really good to see that they've put a lot of work into that because I, I think th there's no doubt Infinity Ward would never go to that extent. So I think Treyarch is the way to go. David Von Der Haar clearly has a, a passion for esports, which is great to see. Um, and he really does care about the community. So it's amazing to think that, you know, a few years ago, we'd never have dreamed of this, like these kind of features. So we've definitely got to take advantage of him. We've definitely got to support the game and do the best we can to kind of bring more players in. Um, but another feature as well I think is really going to help with that is the leagues. Now, for those of you who don't know about the leagues or don't know much about them, basically it's kind of similar to StarCraft with the leagues. There's a different number of leagues, so say there's like bronze, silver, gold, platinum, I don't know what they'll be called. But um, there's a different number of leagues that will basically... Um, it's kind of like FIFA as well, if you play FIFA head-to-head -head seasons. You have different divisions and you play people in your division, so you're playing people on the same skill level. And that's going to make the games more even, a lot more balanced. So if you're a new player, you'll be playing other people that are on your skill level, so they'll find it easy to get kills and get into the game. Because I think when new players do start playing, they'll just they'll go in a lobby and they'll end up against good players and just keep getting killed over and over. And they're not going to really learn anything from that. You do need to be able to actually kill people to you know improve. Um, as silly as it might sound, but yeah, I think that's a really good feature, not only for allowing people to improve, but I think it's going to add competition to publics, which is something that's massively been lacking. I think a lot of people just go into public games and just want to get a good KD ratio, uh, drop a Moab or whatever, because you do join a lot of public games and just see people camping when, say on Domination, they're getting free caps and they're not even looking to try and capture a flag. Um, so I think this is really going to improve like the whole competition side of public players and hopefully get them into competitive game, and I think that's overall what the aim is with it. Um, I think a good idea with that would be somehow maybe for the top division have some sort of competitions or maybe just for each division have competitions for each, each division um, like whoever's in the top you know 10 teams in that division gets some sort of prize I don't know something like that because if it's just leagues and then people get promoted and demoted um, and there's no real point to it I don't see how that's going to really bring people over to the competitive side I think something that they're slightly missing from watching is they're not really educating people about what sites they need to go on to so I, I saw a few questions like on the stream on Gamescom stream and one of them asked her um, so basically they were asking what tips they should get to get into uh, competitive gaming and uh, they basically answered it saying oh just get a team and get some players and start playing the game and I think people know that they need to get players and play but I think what a lot of players want to know is how how do you get into it because you got to think about it, there's sites like DeSoto, Game Battles um, I don't know where the American stays, 360 icons maybe. Um, and that's kind of where our communities are based, and that's where we find out about LAN events, that's where we find out about you know how to go to LAN events. So these new players, they don't know about these sites, and so they're just on these leaderboards, they're just on the public games, and they want to go to LANs, but how do they go to LANs when they don't even know what the LANs are, when they are, how to prepare for LANs, what the rule sets are for LANs, things like that. So I think something that they needed to focus on a bit more was kind of educating people about the different sites, competitive websites, LAN events and I know that's not up to Treyarch to do because they have their own game, they, that's what they're going to be doing, just producing their game but that's something that kind of everybody else needs to focus on in the community, we need to make sure these new players that really want to get into the scene know what sites to go on to and how to get involved with the scene because if they don't know what sites to go on to, how to sign up to tournaments then we're not going to get the players, it's as simple as that, it's about educating them I think but um, I guess we'll see what they'll do in the future. I know it was only meant to be a showcase for the game but I think that's something that needs to be focused on a lot more as good as the game might be um, for like um, kind of increasing the awareness of esports it's also about 
bringing people to the, the sites that we're all based on basically um, but yeah I just kind of wanted to wrap a bit of that up as well because I think that was something that was slightly missed um, maybe in the stream a missed opportunity if you like to kind of advertise the sites a bit um, but maybe I don't know if they were allowed to do that or what but I don't know, I don't know. anyways uh, I'll move on to something else uh, one of the key discussions as well is score streaks um, which obviously they're known as kill streaks but now they're based off score so when you get a certain amount of points so say if you capture a flag or something it might count as like getting three kills or something like that um, and so people are saying now, oh yeah, it's it's based around score. So yeah, kill whoring doesn't get you kill streaks. So that's great. We can add it to competitive gaming. But no matter how you get kill streaks, in my opinion, they should never be involved in competitive gaming because you could see from watching the stream that when somebody got a death machine or a whatever they're called, war machine, it just completely changed the game. I mean, somebody could yeah, they could capture a few flags, but the fact they've captured those flags, they're already at advantage because uh, you know they're two nil up, like three nil up, whatever on the map. So. You know, it's going to be like um, it's going to be pretty weird to see people w walking around with these overpowered weapons and kill streaks when they're already freeing up. So I don't see why people need an even bigger advantage for being up on score already. So I don't really support the idea of that. I know that people think it will bring in more um, public players, but I don't see, I don't think it will necessarily bring in a lot more players. Um, I think it's going to be it's going to ruin the game. Basically, is what I think. I think you look at Call of Duty how it is now it's all based around teamwork awareness but if you have things like UAVs that show players up on the map so you're walking around the map you don't need any awareness because you've just got a UAV it shows where all the opposition is if somebody's flanking your flag if they're all in their base just the map knowledge goes out the window once you get a UAV and then there's radar jammers which just completely ruins the way you can structure your team because you don't know where your teammates are um, so I just can't see how it would work in competitive game and I think you know, we've made these sites like this, uh, you know, game battles. They're all there because we don't want to play public settings. We want to play a competitive playlist that involves skill and teamwork. So I think going to uh, the public side of things, where we get kill streaks and stuff, people seem to have this um, reason to think that it's going to all of a sudden just mean that all the public players will move over. I think it's more to do with educating people about esports, what it's about rather than just, oh, because now we've added kill streaks, everybody's going to want to come to LAN events. I don't think they will. I think it might slightly improve the numbers, but I think if esports really does become big, it's not going to be because we've just added kill streaks. It's going to be because we've educated people through that Gamescom stream, through you know different things like podcasting and streaming. People will see what it's all about. It's, you know, it's all about skill, teamwork, um, and you know I don't think we should change that. That's what it's all about for us. That's why we all play. That's why we all enjoy it. I think you add kill streaks and things like that, it's going to ruin why the reason that we play. I mean, just imagine playing and then this chopper just comes down and just destroys the game. That's that's how I see it will happen. So I, I personally don't think it's an option at all to to get things like kill streaks and score streaks in. As much as people think that it might uh, make the scene a lot bigger, I think there's a lot more to it than just adding kill streaks and then voila, we're going to get a thousand teams at lands. Um, I think there's a, a much more important thing that we need to aim for, and that's making sure that people know. Um, where they need to go, sites like the Certo Game Battles um, and I think overall yeah it could improve numbers but I think we're going to be sacrificing too much just to increase the numbers um, but I don't know, everybody has their own opinion on that I guess but that's just my opinion on it and it's not necessarily the right opinion but that's just how I see it um, I got involved with Call of Duty because I just enjoy the fact there's no air support and it's just pure teamwork um, and all about the four players in your team rather than other things aiding you but um, some people might think it's going to improve the game I don't know if you guys think it is going to then leave a comment below I guess it's good to see what all, all you lot think as well um, so if you guys have any opinions of what I've just said or have your own opinions then just drop a comment below and um, I'll happily read them or maybe answer them or whatever if you have questions about it because uh, obviously my teammates went so I'm prob I'll probably get a bit of information off them about the game but um, yeah, so I'm going to wrap that up there guys, thanks for listening, and like I say, leave your thoughts below, comments below about the game, what you think you're, you're going to enjoy the most about the game, what you're looking forward to or whatever, um, but I'm going to do an i46 commentary soon as well, because that's coming up this weekend, um, so that's going to be a good event, because um, obviously there's a lot of top teams going to that, so I'll probably do that, and it'll be up in the next few days before I set off probably, um, but yeah, uh, thanks for listening guys, follow me on Twitter at Ice Hours, and I'll see you next time, cheers.